Hello, friends. Welcome back to Kid Short Stories. If this is your first time listening, my name is Mr. Jim, and welcome to the family. <laughs> Parents, my name, like I said, is Mr. Jim, and it is my mission to produce as much screenless entertainment and activities for your kids as I can possibly manage. And so that's why we do stories every single day, because these stories not only are fun, but they also inspire imagination. Well, friends, are you guys ready for today's imaginative adventure? Me too. Let's go. Theron and Everett were spending the day at the beach. They loved to go to the beach and do all kinds of amazing imaginative adventures. When you go to the beach, what do you like to play? It's pretty fun to imagine there was pirate ships off in the distance and you have to hide or else they're going to get you. Or maybe there's a treasure at the beach. You got to dig it up. Or maybe there's a lost creature that you must help get back into the water. Well, the beach has endless opportunities for an amazing adventure. And that's exactly what is about to happen to Theron and Everett. It was a hot summer day as the two of them were splashing in the waves. They were imagining that they were a team of explorers that were the first ones to ever be on that beach. And they were looking for some new creatures never before seen. Everett, look at this over here, Theron said. He was pointing down at the sand and there were these little holes in the sand. And as the water would flow over it, bubbles would come out from it. And Theron imagined what was inside. What do you think is down deep in the sand, Everett? Hmm. Everett thought for a minute and said, well, there must be creatures down there. Maybe creatures that are stuck in the sand. We gotta save them! As they started digging in the sand, Everett paused and saw something off in the distance. Theron, do you see that thing in the water? Where is it a pirate ship? said Theron, laughing. No, 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 no. I'm serious. I'm, I'm not I'm not uh I'm not joking. I see something really large floating in the water out there. As soon as Everett changed his tone, Theron looked up and put his hand over his eyes. It was a very sunny day, and so he had to Oh, wait a second. Yeah, I do see that, said Theron. Off in the distance, Everett had discovered something that was floating in the water. It looked like a giant wooden box, like a big crate, much bigger than them, and so they had no idea what on earth could be floating in the ocean inside of that big wooden crate. But as the waves were crashing on the beach, those were the same waves that were bringing this wooden box closer and closer to Theron and Everett. Everett, go grab something to see if we can open that thing. I think it's about to land on shore. Everett ran over and grabbed one of their shovels as Theron grabbed the box and was able to push it to shore. It was way bigger than him. It was a massive box, but as it was floating in the water, you know, heavy things when they float on water, they're, they're a lot easier to push. But as soon as it bumped into the sand on the beach, there was no more budging this ginormous wooden crate. Here's a shovel. Everett was holding it above his head like a victorious adventurer who had discovered something. He passed the shovel to Theron, who used the edge of the shovel to wedge into this part of the wooden crate that it looked kind of like a door, but it had a lock on it. But maybe, just maybe, he could pry it open. As he started to try and open up that locked door, they heard a sound inside. <laughs> Theron dropped the shovel and jumped back. Ah! Everett, did you hear that? There's some kind of creature in there. And it was then that they realized that there was some writing on the side of the box. Danger, wild animal inside. <gasps> There's an animal in there. He's stuck. He's probably almost drowning. We gotta get him out of there, said Everett. Okay, but... What do you think's in there? Guys, hold on a second. What do you think is inside of that box? It's, like I said, it's way bigger than them. It's taller than them, longer than them, wider than them. There must be a very ginormous creature in there. 
Theron picked the shovel back up and wedged it into the edge of the door and pushed with all of his might. It wasn't enough, and so Everett came to, and they both pushed the shovel, and finally, pop! The lock cracked off and flew into the sand. The door immediately swung open. It was very rusty and very squeaky, but as the door opened, the two brothers looked inside and couldn't believe it. Ah! It's a ginormous butt! And they were not joking. There it was. A ginormous gray. I don't know how else to say this. Bottom? A bottom of an animal? What is that thing? Look at that tiny little tail, said Everett. Theron and Everett backed up, and so did the creature inside of the box. <clears throat> As he stepped out, backing up almost like a truck, beep, 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 out from the box. <laughs> they couldn't believe it. It was a ginormous rhinoceros. Holy smokes, is that guy big, said Theron. (sighs) Oh, it's okay there, big guy, as Everett was patting the side of the rhinoceros. It's gonna be okay. Theron, what do we do? Asked Everett. I don't know, but look at this. Inside, there were were a whole bunch of papers, like maps and a whole bunch of stuff they didn't understand, but they could definitely tell where this creature had come from. Look at this. I think like some poachers stole this rhinoceros from its home. We've got to figure out a way to get it back, said Theron. How in the world are we going to get this thing back across the ocean to where it came from? Everett didn't even take a second to think of an awesome idea. Well, look at this. This crate that the rhinoceros was in is a giant wooden crate. I bet we could change this into some kind of raft, and then we could cruise across the ocean and bring him back to his home. Everett was full of really good ideas, and this was one of those. Wow, I love it, said Theron. Let's get to work. The two brothers started modifying the crate into more of a raft. So they took the roof off and sealed up the sides, and there it was. It was absolutely perfect. They could all fit in with the rhinoceros, and they grabbed some delicious food for the rhinoceros, which he really loved to eat the grass that was on the shore of the beach. They grabbed some water bottles, and off they began their journey of rafting across the ocean with a rhinoceros. <laughs> Could you do that kind of adventure? Would you be brave enough? Oh, I bet you are. Well, these two brothers sailed across the ocean with their new friend, Mr. Rhino, and Mr. Rhino was so happy when he could see his house, his home not that far away. After several hours of rafting across the ocean, they finally made it back to his home. He jumped off the raft and huffed and puffed (laughs) and made a big sound and he was clearly very happy. Wow! Great job, Theron and Everett! You guys saved the day! You saved this rhino and returning him back to his home. This may be the end of the story, but these two brothers sure do love a great adventure. And I'm sure there's another amazing adventure that lies ahead. The end. Great job. You listened all the way to the end. And you know what time it is. It's time for Kid Shoutouts. I want to say hey to Seven, Josephine from Chicago, Sadie and Xander from Oklahoma, Hope and Grace from Los Angeles, California, Leo and Charlie from Ohio, Emma from Illinois, Leighton from Canada, Sophie and Emma from Ontario, and Sean from Sydney, Australia. I'm so glad that you're all on our Kid Short Stories family and on the spy team. We could not stop Dr. Stinky Breath and his crew without you, my friends. Will you have a super duper day? I'll see you next time. Bye.